When we left Isadora, <laughs> she was pinning a note to the sewing machine man or something. <laughs> what, what, what happened yes, there? We, we stopped in mid-story. Yes. Well, as a child, I didn't like her because we had to... Uh, she used to sit or lie on a kind of divan and was covered like a cocoon, a silk cocoon in draperies. And at that time, she had hennaed hair and painted nails. And for a child, you know... All that time ago, it was like something completely artificial and rather frightening. And she used to make us walk up in line, uh, line up in the morning and walk up and kiss her hand. And I didn't go along with that, partly, of course, because my parents were socialists and my mother was a suffragette. And the child of, of these advanced people did not like kissing hands, you know. I didn't mind my hand being kissed later, of course, but yeah. at the time, I was very upset. And then we were little clothes horses. We used to have a blue salon and a white salon, and all the distinguished people in Paris. In fact, Europe, Rodin was said to come there and draw us all. I believe he did. Some of those little Rodin pictures you see are probably others, maybe me, I don't know. And um, anyway, we were, in the morning we wore blue linen little dresses, and then we were watched by famous people as we ate lunch. <laughs> and uh, then Sounds we like a changed into pale blue little dresses. We danced in the blue salon in blue chiffon, in the white salon in white chiffon. Then we were taken into the Louvre, like prize Pekingese, Pekingese. And... Um, I know we all had great coats for that. We were taking Rolls Royces and saw Versailles. And it was all very educational, except, for example, I was given a sort of a khaki, khaki, horse down colored coat. It was a dreadful color. And all the other children, we each had different colors, but I happened to get this horrible colored coat. And it mm. makes a child very unhappy, you know. So what with my sort of khaki coat and the hand kissing, I, I was very, very... Uh, what an odd childhood. Yes. I While you were doing that, I was taking piano lessons in Nebraska. It just doesn't sound the same somehow. No, it didn't have much effect, obviously. No. No. <laughs> Which, but, Nebraska um, or the piano no, lessons? No, I was also... Oh, <laughs> the piano Sorry. lessons. I was no. also the only girl at a boys' school to change the subject from Isadora. This is at another school. Another you were school. the only girl in a boys' school? Mm. Did you cast yourself off as a boy or how did that No, happen? no, I just wouldn't uh, go to what is called public school, free school. In England, it's mm. called council school. But still, that's just incidentally when you said what a strange childhood, I no. jumped to that. That's all. I would think you would. But were you miserable at a boys school? <laughs> oh, no. No. Good Not gracious, no, no. That the opposite fine. of miserable. Yes, I'd be, I was rather cruel like boys are. I mean, it's the basic cruelty in little boys, I think, that partly is back of war. But, you know, they're cruel. Are you saying that women have no vicious streaks? Uh, oh, yes, of course they have. Yeah. But it's a different type. Bitchiness, as apart from, uh, as I was mentioning before. Bitchiness as usual is the motto. Yes, but little boys, you know, I mean, we... <laughs> we How do I do it? I'm sorry, Miss Lanchester. It's perfectly all right, Mr. Cabot. <laughs> <laughs> Something in your tone. Uh, but uh, did you finally... Get taken out of this boys' school, or did you leave well, it voluntarily? No, the school stopped when I was 13, and I wasn't fit to go to any other school. And so I didn't have any more schooling. Do you feel warped at all by having been in a boys' school when you, <laughs> when you should have been in a, in a co-ed school? No, not at all. No, I mean, uh, I sort of get by, being a sort of London city child, mm -hmm. I get by with the kind of thing that children in cities get very smart, do you know? I'm not educated, but I'm smart. Yeah. I have no... I'm completely unerudite, if that's a word. You know Sounds like I mean. one. Sounds like a word, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're not educated in the formal sense. Not you quit, at all. quit going to school. Yeah. And your parents were vegetarians and... And, and socialists. Were they also pacifists? Yes. <laughs> what would they do today with the studies that have proved that vegetables have feelings, I wonder? And that, do you know about this? I yes, think I'm I know. That, but uh -huh. They did a study in which they wired them with whatever would correspond to electrodes <laughs> and found that a, a man came in and was cruel to some plants and tore them up. And when the same man entered the room, the other plants yes. betrayed I something I, like no, fear. I don't think it was completely to do with cruelty. I just think that my mother, who was the dominant one, just didn't like meat. My father wanted to eat meat. In fact, he felt quite ill without it. And occasionally she'd let him buy a, a pig's head. 
you know. Well, that's very cheap, and also if it's cooked, you know, it's called tête de veau vinaigrette. So it's not so bad as you might think. But the result was that we all used to sort of stand around and watch him eat this face, you see. And my mother used to walk by and say, I hope you're enjoying your corpse. <laughs> did wonders for digestion. <laughs> Speaking of that era, did you know Zelda Fitzgerald, too? Since no, I no, I wasn't in America. See, I was in England at that time. Yeah. I came to America in 1932. Mm -hmm. That's when we were showing our legs on board ship. Who was? Well, I only mentioned that because it took me back to, uh, you know, you cover as much territory as you can in these quick interviews. That's and um, <laughs> the, um, I just... It, gave me a picture of sitting on the rail, arriving in New York, with my skirt way, way up, you know, and photographers beneath you, you know, saying, higher, 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 all the time. And after all, with miniskirts up there already, so you don't, it's really, it was much more indecent then to be told to lift it up higher. Yes. Wasn't it? So, back to Must Zelda. Must have been. I, I can't imagine things like that. I just that, switched right? from Zelda because I know nothing yeah. about that uh, oh. particular period in America. You know. Now, so what, are the, what are, is your arrival year in America? In the 30s? In uh, 31, I think it was, yes. We did a play. Then Charles, of course, was sort of drawn into films in Hollywood. There's this talk of a mysterious, unfinished film that he tried one, yes, tried, was yes. making one time called I, Claudius. And then it was never finished. Is there any place anyone can ever see that? Uh, I, well, I think um, it's... Uh, it's been shown around the country, I think. It's been syndicated, but it was made by BBC. And it's a marvelous oh, documentary. Okay. I'm glad to say it is, there's no, no documentary been made about Charles, and they're pretty routine, those documentaries. So this is a remarkable piece of work because it gathers all the efforts that he made to get into the character, the thing I was talking about right at the beginning of this conversation. Mm -hmm. And he goes Cockney, he goes returns to his roots, which are Yorkshire, and he curses and swears, and eventually he, you see these rushes with him cursing and swearing. Rushes, so you know what uh, the days work. Yeah. And um, he certainly, um, he eventually gave a performance, which they got that piece in this film, which is so great that it really, the film is, makes you weep because he never fulfilled the promise of this in extraordinary performance of Claudius. But it's only really? sections. They only got a third of the way through. And, Gee, I'd love uh, to see this that. This film, it is around the country, and uh, I don't know, some station. You... And you once played Peter Pan with him. Oh, he, yes. He played Captain Hook, and you played Peter Pan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so Where was, was that? Uh, at the Palladium. In London? In London, yeah. yes. And okay. then you broke your arm or something and, and flew sideways? or how? No, I never broke my arm. A rib? I broke a couple of ribs it. because they flew me badly. The man that flew me had flu. <coughs> oh, God. Almost and, sounds like a terrible pun. <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah. And it, uh, and uh, understudy, a flying understudy was on. He kind of lifted me with a jerk. But oddly enough, I mean, you do two shows a day of Peter Pan. That's three and a half, that's seven and a half hours you're in that flying outfit. You see, oh. twice a day. And it broke a rib? The, 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 the harness the caught me in such a way, rig. I suppose. But it's, yeah. it was a relief to go on, because when you're on the stage, you feel nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, right. if you poke my eye out this minute, I probably wouldn't know. Because we're in front of people, and there's some sort of thing in the air. Uh -huh. You know, that... Uh, yeah, there's actors go on very sick um, and feel yeah. well. I've seen you with a cold on, and you soon forget it, don't you? Yes. You've been on with a cold. Sneeze my way through the conversation and try to pass it up. I, I have always thought that Peter Pan would be an impossible role. I don't see how any adult could go down to the footlights and say, clap your hands if you believe in fairies. But I suppose <laughs> that uh, it well, can be done with the prop. It's an, I like to, uh, my two acting parts are Ariel, the old Vic, and yeah. Peter Pan. Uh, because I haven't really done a great deal of acting on the stage itself, you know. You mm -hmm. can announce me as much as you like as a stage actress, but you can forget But I'd be it. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you ever met Alan Delon? Uh, no, I haven't. Would you like to? Uh, very much, of course. What should I say? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be refreshing if someone said, not especially. <laughs> After this brief message of interest, we will return.